Hello there. I recently hit 1,000 subscribers, so a big thank you to everyone that subscribes to the channel. And as such, I thought I'd do a bit of a Q&A. So let's get stuck in. Did I play another instrument before starting to learn the piano? Yes, I did. I played the guitar. I was given a guitar by my parents on, I think, my 15th birthday or Christmas, one or the other. I played for about three years. I was in like a metal band with my friends. I still have the guitar. Now I'm about to string a bunch of clips together so it looks as if I can still play it quite well. Bonus points if you can name all these songs in the comments. <laughs> Next question. Could I already read music when I started to play the piano? The short answer is I half could. When I played guitar when I was younger, I was able to read guitar tab, which is easy because it's just the strings and the number for the fret. But above that, they have music notation and you use that to know the timing of the music you're about to play. I could read the timing and I could write the timing and I would write the timing when I was writing songs for my band, but I had no idea about the pitch side of things. So that has been a learning process now. Uh, next question, do I have a teacher? Yes, I have a teacher. I've had the same teacher now since about this time last year. So March last year, I started the piano using the Faber book, The Adult Piano Adventures. And I think it was within 10 days or so, I decided that this is something I'm kind of enjoying but I want to do it properly. So I'm going to find the best teacher I can find and I'm going to get them to teach me. And that's what I did. Uh, so I think I had my first kind of consultation with my teacher in mid-February. And then I had a couple of lessons in March and then lockdown happened here in the UK. And from that point on, I've been having Skype lessons with her for the past year. So yes, I have a teacher and I advise getting a teacher. Right, next question. This is, this is an interesting one that I had. What do I learn from my teacher that I wouldn't learn without? There is so much that I learn from a teacher that I would not learn without. Because a teacher, especially my teacher, because she was a concert pianist and she's listed on the Steinway website. She is an ABRSM examiner. So she's very, very good. So she teaches me all sorts of things that I would not necessarily even consider. Like, give a recent example. She was telling me that when I'm playing piano, like softly, I should feel small. And I can actually physically be small, like when I'm playing the piano. So now, you know, I'm actually quite big. I'm six foot three and weigh almost 100 kilos. So being small is quite difficult. But now when I'm playing a piano section, I'm trying to actually kind of feel smaller and play softer. It's just a general advice about maybe how to practice something or how to how to phrase something that's, you know, it's not written in the score, but this is what you should do anyway, because that's how you do things. And it's those sorts of things that a teacher can tell you that I don't think you'll find easily elsewhere. This is a good one. Do I mess up pieces that I can play when I play them in front of my teacher? Oh yes, I do. <laughs> and it is very, very frustrating. It always happens with the pieces I feel that I know best and I'm, I'm going into the lesson, super excited. I've really worked hard on this piece. I'm playing it really well. And then I play it for my teacher and I just bomb it. It's, it's almost guaranteed now, I just bomb it. And it's just, it's infuriating, but what can you do but laugh? How long and how often do I practice? I try and practice an hour every day. That's, that's what I try and do. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes I may practice a little bit more. What I'm finding more recently is that because some of the pieces I can play are more interesting, I tend to play them just when I'm passing the piano. But that's typically what I go for. 
Do I practice scales and do exercises? I practice scales every day as part of my session. I write down the scales that I'm doing and how fast I can play them with a metronome. And I will go through the list of scales that I know and find the one that I'm slowest at and I'll work on that one and make it a bit faster. In terms of exercises, I recently started doing Hannon number one. And again, I'm just notching it up a metronome beat every time I play it through cleanly. But other than that, not really any exercises other than, you know, you find a small passage that you're having trouble with in a piece and just play that over and over again as an exercise. When can I use both my hands independently? I think this is kind of a big misunderstanding with beginners is this whole idea of hand independence. And when I stopped thinking about it as hands doing separate things is when I kind of made the most progress. So I try and think about it like my hands are performing like a ballroom dance, you know? So they each have their own steps, but they've got to perform them at the same time. It's not like one hand is doing one thing that I don't know about and the other hand is doing the other thing. They're trying to, they're doing something that is coordinated. And so to learn it, I'll do hands alone at first, kind of learning the steps for each partner. I'll put them together and then I'll do it slowly. And when I say slowly, I mean so slowly sometimes that it's not even music anymore. It's just very slow and I'm making sure that the hands are coordinated at the right time and then I just build it up from there. So are they independent? Not really. Uh, two hands doing the same thing. I understand where it comes from and don't get me wrong, as I get better, it's easier to make my hands do this dance. But I think the idea that one hand is doing one thing and the other is doing something else is a bit misleading. Anyway, that, that's my take on it. Let me know what you think in the comments. How many pieces do I work on at a time? So typically I work on three pieces at a time and ideally they'll all be in different stages of development. So there'll be one piece that I'm literally just going through and kind of reading for the first time and just kind of getting to know the piece. There'll be a piece that is, I've, I know the whole thing and I'm working to get it up to tempo and then there'll be the piece that's kind of completely learned and I am really refining the details. The newest piece I'm learning, I'll spend the most time on and then the piece that I know and I'm just kind of really trying to refine it, I'll probably spend like five, 10 minutes on. What is my approach to learning a new piece? So up until now, it has been Start at the beginning, learn a few bars, move on. Maybe learn the first four bars, move on to the next four bars, and then piece those together. You know, just work through it like that. I mentioned it in one of my videos, I'd got to the end of one piece recently and it taken me so long to get there, kind of forgotten the beginning. Recently, my teacher has given me some new advice, which goes again into the, what can your teacher tell you? And this is to go for a piece, hands alone, the whole thing, just barely able to play it. So it's kind of sight reading exercise, as well as getting familiar with the piece. If you've gone through the whole piece, it's kind of bubbling away in the back of your brain, even when you're not kind of playing it. So it's there and you're internalizing it and it's helping. Whereas if you don't do that, the most difficult piece of the music may still be to come. And it would be good if you found that early and then it's bubbling away in the back of your mind for longer. That's what I'm doing. That's how, that's how I'm approaching my new pieces now. But before it was literally just a few bars, next bit, a few bars and so on but yeah i'm sure there's a million ways of doing this how often do i play my old repertoire not very often is the is the answer primarily because it's not very interesting <laughs> what are my dream pieces to play as you may have noticed from the start of this video my background in music is heavy metal and rock and to be honest the first time i probably ever listened to classical music voluntarily was at the start of this kind of piano adventure journey thing of mine. I don't really know that much about classical music if I'm perfectly honest. So I don't really have any dream pieces. Like because of my music background in heavy metal, I would like to play some of the stuff that Gamazda, I don't know how you pronounced her name, Russian lady plays heavy metal covers on the piano brilliantly. She releases the scores for those as well. So at some point I'm gonna try and learn things like Nothing Else Matters, uh, The Unforgiven, and some of the other stuff she's done because I think it's brilliant. There's some dream pieces right there. Why not play the music I want to play? Okay, so that kind of leads from the last question. I'm playing what I'm playing at the moment because I want to build a foundation of being able to play the piano properly. And I think classical music gives you that foundation better than other music. And I'd like to learn you know, more theory along with it as well, and then have a really good understanding of what I'm playing when I kind of branch out into different types of music. If I go back, what would I do differently? What would I do differently? I mean, I don't want to sound kind of 
arrogant or something, but there isn't much I would do differently. Because like I say, I mean, my advice to someone would be find the best teacher you can. And that's what I did very early. So I'm happy with that. Possibly invest more time in sight reading to begin with. And then maybe I just don't know enough yet to know what I would do differently. Because I'm still in that don't know what you don't know stage in the Dunning-Kruger cycle of things. So this is a tough one. Can I describe how piano is both getting easier and more difficult at the same time? In some respects, the difficulty doesn't change because when you're pushing yourself, you're kind of always on that limit of your ability and everything always feels hard. So every new piece I learn feels hard. The difference being, obviously, that the pieces are more complicated than the previous pieces. And so it sounds better, ultimately. But what's getting easier, having the hands do what I want them to do quicker. The things that are difficult are more, you know, interpretation, finessing pieces is still really difficult for me. Rhythms are more complicated. You know, while some stuff gets easier, other stuff gets harder. And overall, it just always feels difficult. Have I ever considered using apps to learn? There are some apps I use for my playing. As you've probably seen, I have the Fourscore app to load my sheet music into. I use apps like that, but I don't feel I should use apps like Piano Marvel or Flow Key or whatever they're called, uh, just because it's the same thing as kind of just not having a teacher. I, can, I could get all the notes right, but that's only a tiny piece of playing music. But maybe I just don't know enough about the apps. But overall, it's funny because personally, my occupation is an app developer, so you'd think I'd be into it, but I'm just not. <laughs> Who knows? What app do I use on my iPad to annotate the music? As I just mentioned, I use Fourscore. I think this app is brilliant. I use it to scan my music. I buy the books, I scan the music, I annotate it when I'm having my lessons with the information my teacher is giving me. I set up like a set list so I know what I'm doing in my practice routines. I hope to do a much more in-depth video on how I use it and how I think it accelerates my learning. How is the Kawai CA99? I love it. I think it's brilliant. I think it was a, a worthwhile upgrade. I worried initially. I made the order and as I was waiting for it to arrive, I was thinking, is it going to be that much better than what I already had? And I started to doubt myself and then it arrived, I played it and it was. It was much, much, much better. I don't have a lot of experience with pianos. I've played the Roland, I played my teacher's Steinway grand piano, and I've played this one. And all I can really say is that the leap between the Steinway and the Kawai is a lot smaller than it was between the Roland and the Steinway. Did I consider the CA-79 and why did I choose the CA-99? Yes, I did consider the 79 because obviously it's cheaper and I think much of it is the same. I believe it has the same action, has the same sound engine, all that stuff the same. Personally, I preferred the look of the CA99 and I liked the idea of the soundboard. Right, that's it. I'm out of questions. We'll do another one of these when we get another zero over here. I'll see you in the next one.